You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. As we were going off air on uh, on Tuesday, the news broke that uh, Corey Raymond was returning to LSU, uh, something that had been um, oft discussed really for uh, a, a month, maybe longer now. I know we've talked about it here, and I think Shea was the first to have it, and everyone subsequently followed. LSU has still not formally released that, just like LSU has not formally announced Kevin Peoples joining staff, but when everybody has it, you know, it's just a matter of when LSU decides they want to release that information. And my assumption is they're just waiting to to announce all of the staff additions at once. So we'll see how they do that. I don't I, I don't really care or have any preference how LSU chooses to do it as long as the, the deal is done. And I am fired up about this news. Listen, if you were with us the day Corey Raymond was let go at Florida, I sat right here in this chair and and implored LSU to do the right thing and bring Corey Raymond back to LSU. And I don't feel like I should have to explain why this is great news, but I do have to spend some time debunking some of the heresy that is out there from some of you. I've heard some LSU fans, well, Corey Raymond stopped recruiting. Oh, really? Because in 2019, they signed Derek Stingley, Cordell Flott, Jay Ward, Radarius Jones. Those were just the corners, not even including the safeties. They were pretty good. Three of them did, were anyway. And in 2020, you added Elias Ricks and Dwight McLeather. And if you're going to sit there and tell me, well, that was only two. Well, that's because you signed four the year prior. And what happened? It was a COVID year. Stingley got hurt and missed most of that season. And you ended up playing freshman Ricks and freshman McLeathern, who both played pretty well. And redshirt freshman Jay Ward. A year later, in 2021, Stingley opted out. You had Ricks back. You signed Demarius McGee. You signed Sage Ryan, a five-star that everybody wanted and you had to have. And then what happened? COVID hit. Obviously, Ed Ogeron tanked the entire friggin' program. You had your third defensive coordinator in, in as many seasons. You went from Dave Aranda in 2019 to Bo Pelini in 2020. And remember, you switched from the 3-4 that Aranda run, ran to the thing that, that Ed Ogeron wanted to do, which was switch back to a 4-3. He bought, brought in Bo Pelini, who was the laziest coach maybe who's ever been on staff at LSU. You were the worst defense in college football and nobody at the time was putting that at the feet of Corey Raymond, but some of you conveniently want to do it now, which is dumb. After 2021, when your entire roster was decimated, Ricks and McLeathern both transferred out. Your numbers would have been fine. But they weren't, because everybody left. Brian Kelly came in, he had to go into the portal. We know what happened, but don't tell me that you stopped recruiting the position. That's just dumb. I've also heard people say, yeah, well, Corey's defense is the last four years. Look at the past defense. They've slipped. You know what? In 2019, they won the national championship. In 2020, we know what happened. They were 128th in the country in past defense. I don't think you're laying that squarely at the feet of Corey Raymond. That is far more Bo Pelini to blame. A year later, in 2021, you fire Bo Pelini. You bring in Dur Durante Jones, the past defense improved to 80th in the country. Still not the standard, of course, but you're playing young players. Derek Stingley opted out, and we know what happened. Corey goes to Florida, had zero NFL talent. They were 84th in the country a year ago, and in 2023, they improved to 70th, again, without having a defensive back that's drafted. Yo. Let's get real, Okay. If, you, if for whatever reason you, you're not in favor of Corey Raymond returning, at least be honest with yourself. Be genuine. Don't give me some crap about how he stopped recruiting. and he, Like, he doesn't... What? Corey Raymond forgot how to teach guys to backpedal and flip their hips? Kick rocks. A position coach's job is to get their guys functionally and skillfully ready to play. You didn't have that this year with Robert Steeples. 
That was obvious. Pete Jenkins is 84 years old. You think you forgot to teach guys how to get into a stance, how to explode, how to align their feet? Don't tell me Corey Raymond doesn't know how to coach defensive backs. It's stupid. And don't tell me he stopped recruiting. Because of the top 10 players in Louisiana this year, LSU only missed on one of them. A cornerback, Wardell Mack. You know where he went? Florida. Until for- Corey Raymond got fired, and then he left and went to Texas. Come on, y'all. Be honest with yourself. And I'm not talking about everybody because most everybody's rejoicing today and you should be. But for those of you blasphemers out there trying to criticize a guy who had seven first-team All-Americans during his time at LSU, Eric Reed, Jalen Mills, Jamal Adams, Tredavious White, Greedy Williams, Grant Delpit, Derek Stingley. Delpit won a Thorpe Award. Stingley should have. He had 14 defensive backs drafted under Corey Raymond, three in the first round, five in the second round. That doesn't even include guys like Tyron Matthew, Richard Robinson, Jalen Collins, Therold Simon. Do I need to remind you how good it was for a decade here with that guy opening up the pipeline of talent in the secondary? Look at what you got now. None of those guys look like any of the guys he brought here for a decade. And I'll say this about Brian Kelly. He is assembling an all-star staff on both sides of the ball. Blake Baker, Bo Davis, Peoples, Corey Raymond on the offensive side, Sloan, Wilson, Brad Davis. You have a loaded coaching staff. Guys that can technically teach and are all elite-level recruiters. And I credit Brian Kelly for having the humility to change. He brought Brian Polian here as his recruiting coordinator. And that didn't work. Because he tried to use the same principles he used at South Bend and tried to make them fit here. You don't need to get on a plane to go recruit a three-star cornerback. You need to get in a car and go 40 miles south to New Orleans. East. Southeast. Come on. And a lot of people have said, man, just should have never let Blake Baker and Corey Raymond go when you got hired. That's true. But let's be honest about a couple of things. Every coach that ever gets hired everywhere has autonomy to bring in their staff. And every single year, there's good coaches that get left go, let go amid staff changes. You hired Matt House to be your defensive coordinator. He was going to coach linebackers. You didn't have a spot for Blake Baker. I get it. And at the time, there was nobody crying about Blake Baker being let go. Yes, letting Corey Raymond and Greg McMahon go were massive mistakes by Brian Kelly when he got hired. Said it at the time, it proved to be true. You brought in inexperience in the secondary, and you never really fixed special teams. Where you were really good under McMahon. Those were mistakes. But I'll give Brian Kelly credit for having the humility to try to fix them. To try to realize, okay, if I'm going to win here at this place, I have to do it differently than I did in South Bend or anywhere else he's been. Because I've said it a bajillion times. Where is the advantage for LSU? The dirt. Recruit this state. Nick Saban showed you. Put a fence around it. Get the best players to stay home. Recruit the state of Louisiana. Cherry pick out of Houston and Dallas and Atlanta. And you can build a roster that looks like the national championship rosters that LSU has had here over the last 20 years. So yes, Brian Kelly has done an incredible job since he's been here of building structure and building culture and accountability and things that were lacking at the end with Ed Ogeron. That is undeniable. That is not even an argument. Your program was was in shambles. It was a disaster top down because you had no leadership. And Brian Kelly is coming and he's fixed that. But even with that, there's a ceiling on what you can do if you don't have players. Now Brian Kelly is assembling a staff with the help of the administration and people who have been here. Scott Woodward, Verge Osbury, Frank Wilson, people that know this state, the culture, the recruiting ties, the inroads, to say, how do I get the best players here to stay here? And he's leaned on those people. He's had the humility to do it, to know what he knows and what he doesn't know. 
and allowed people to help him assemble a staff that is going to win at the highest level here. The only question they have left on this on this coaching staff is how they're going to sort out the roles. Who does what? And they'll get there. But it's much easier to get there when you have an all-star coaching staff with elite-level recruiters that are going to be, bring the best town in the country to Baton Rouge. That's how you win championships. Because if we're being honest with each other, LSU's roster hasn't looked like Georgia's and Alabama's, which is why you're not competing with Georgia and Alabama. Although Alabama's roster ain't looking too good right now, but that's another story for later. Welcome home, Corey Raymond. Guy that knows this state, knows this program, knows this team, knows this talent. It's going to get guys to come play and play hard. They're going to be immediately better in the secondary for it, a place where they've been atrocious the last two years. And for a program that has prided itself, branded itself as DBU for more than a decade, it's about time that returned. And you brought the godfather of DBU back. There's nobody better to do. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.